Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 1 for December the 4th, 2016. We begin a new unit today uh, from our winter quarter, uh, Unit 1 entitled The Savior Has Been Born. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled Reliable Promises. The devotional reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 8, and our background scripture is taken from Luke chapter 1, uh, verses 26 through 38, and we will be studying from our print passage today also, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Our key verse reads, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 31 from the King James Version. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to acknowledge God's faithfulness to Mary and ultimately to all God's people. The second aim, to experience the joy of worshiping Jesus as God's promised Savior. And the third aim is to express trust in God's promises by affirming God's will uh, for your lives. We have three outlines today that we will be discussing. Uh, the first outline is entitled Promise Acknowledged. Second outline is entitled Promise Assured. And the third outline is entitled uh, Promise Revealed. I certainly want to thank God, uh, praise God for his mercies and his grace to us all, particularly to me, uh, in the fact of giving me this opportunity to share uh, a familiar passage with you uh, from God's word uh, about this time every year. Um, these stories come up again and we begin to look back. Um, at the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, to, to edify ourselves, to encourage ourselves, to uh, re-examine these truths and, and to just learn uh, uh, how to stay the course uh, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. But I want to read a little bit of this biblical context uh, for this lesson. The birth announcement of Jesus to Mary is similar to that of the announcement of John to Zechariah. That's Luke chapter 1 verses 8 through 23. There are, however, some outstanding and noteworthy differences. One of the most notable is that Zechariah and Elizabeth are presented as people of high status and great religious honor in the community. By contrast, Mary had no earthly honor or acknowledgments. It is solely because of God's grace and favor and ultimately his character that Mary received such a high acknowledgment. It is God's love that bestows compassion and blessings upon his children. In our lesson uh, today, God is going to strike directly at the status quo in choosing the most common of people to carry his promise of final and total deliverance, healing, and reconciliation. The gift is from God. Humanity neither deserves it uh, nor is capable of earning it. I want to look at just a little bit of this uh, biblical uh, context uh, that is offered in um, our lesson standard uh, the betrothal of um, Mary to Joseph uh, I want to just touch on some of these uh, culture aspects uh, for this lesson betrothal was much more binding than today's custom of being engaged the betrothal period usually lasted about a year the betrothal the betrothed couple was committed to see each other uh, but did not live together or engage in sexual intimacy. During that time a couple made preparations to live together as husband and wife. Since a betrothal was legally binding, uh, ending the relationship required a divorce. 
Indeed, Joseph considered such action. You can see that in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Uh, the text of today's lesson is part of a larger story of God's relationship with his covenant people. The era in which Israel appeared to Mary uh, was a time of subjugation for the Jews. Although Jerusalem and the temple had been rebuilt, after the Babylonian exile, the Jewish people remained under the control of various pagan powers over centuries that followed. The Roman Empire was the occupying power at the time of Jesus' birth. Oppression by those Gentiles fueled hope and expectation that God would send his Messiah to liberate and lead his people. So we get some perspective here. Uh, of what uh, the people of God were anticipating uh, particularly because of their circumstances but uh, before we get into these outlines I want to also go to the gospel according to Luke uh, and I want to go to the very first chapter and I want to set a little bit of a tone if you will in reading the first four verses so we can get some understanding exactly what Luke is accomplishing uh, or endeavoring to accomplish as he writes about this narrative uh, concerning Jesus. Luke chapter 1 verse 1 Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. It seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write uh, to an orderly account most excellent Theophilus that you may know the certainty of the things in which you were instructed. Uh, what Luke is doing here in the opening uh, is written uh, in Greek reminiscent of the classical style, uh, the kind of opening expected in a literary book written for a wide circulation. Uh, Luke addresses Theophilus and explains why he has written. So in verse 1, he uh, many writings of the early church uh, had been lost. Uh, and so as we look at this word fulfilled, the purpose of God uh, had been worked out in the things about uh, which they wrote. And so what Luke did uh, pertaining to eyewitnesses of this, he there was reliable evidence for what was written, although Luke distinguishes himself from those uh, who were eyewitnesses. He was not an eyewitness, but he uh, 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 did a thorough and complete investigation of what he intended to write and so uh, having had perfect understanding or having followed with great care his investigation had been thorough uh, he talked about from the very first he had gone back to the start of the Christian movement uh, and the events surrounding the birth of Jesus himself and so uh, Theophilus uh, addressed a person uh, as a person of rank. Uh, we can see some reference in Acts chapter 23 uh, verse 26 and chapter Acts chapter 24 verse 3. Uh, and then in verse 4 of uh, Luke chapter 1 uh, he talked about uh, the certainty of the things that he was writing about. So we want to be able to take away from this that the Christian faith is well grounded and that's very important because we are dealing with uh, in Luke chapter 1 we're dealing with uh, the fulfillment uh, that word uh, it is a verb the word fulfilled uh, and it is used uh, uh, three senses in three different uh, senses that uh, we want to take uh, uh, make special attention to uh, the first uh, uh, um, definition in dealing with the word fulfill is an ethical sense of observing or meeting requirements 
Uh, secondly, a prophetic sense of corresponding to what was promised, predicted, or foreshadowed. And then thirdly is a temporal um, uh, sense related to the arrival of times uh, ordained by God. So we are dealing with a prophecy um, that had been given uh, in the Old Testament and today, uh, or at least according to this text, uh, we are looking at uh, the fulfillment of that uh, prophecy, and that's very important. But back to the uh, topic, uh, talking about reliable promises, it should be noted that uh, the promises of God are external and they are also internal. We're going to talk about that as we go along and also give you some scriptures that you may reference uh, what God is in, uh, in, intending to do through uh, the believer. But our first outline is entitled Promise Acknowledged and this is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 uh, through 28. I want to read this from the NIV translation in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. So this text uh, picks up with Elizabeth in her second trimester she was six months pregnant uh, as in verse 26 the Lord had uh, <clears throat> spread that the woman of advanced age had uh, not only gotten pregnant but was moving closer to the time of delivery uh, with such a miracle about to unfold the talk could have very well begun to spread regarding what manner of child Elizabeth's baby would grow up to be for truly this was about to be a miracle a wonder from God the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a small insignificant town to a small insignificant teenage uh, teenager engaged to a small insignificant carpenter named Joseph Joseph was a descendant of David's uh, but by blood only he had no riches or fame that would identify him as highly respected uh, or honored by family and friends. Uh, so we must acknowledge that Joseph more than likely had a successful carpentry career. It's important to always acknowledge the fact that Mary was a virgin. It speaks volumes not only to the power of God but also to the keeping of his promise and the awesomeness of his movements. Without a request or call from Mary or Joseph, the dispatched angel, angel arrived in Nazareth and spoke to Mary. Uh, he did not merely speak to her, but gave her a greeting unlike any other greeting that she had ever received. The lowly uh, teenage girl, who was probably thinking more about her recent engagement than anything else, was told that she was highly favored and blessed among women. Uh, Gabriel was about to speak a word of truth to her that she must understand and accept uh, for the promise of God is real and true. You know, the more that you read this story and you hear about this account, uh, the more encouraged uh, you have to become. Uh, you know, as I was thinking about this lesson and, and here Mary is um, is receiving a word from God to carry the Christ child that she would be uh, the bearer of the Christ child but as we were looking at uh, the promises of God and talking about how um, the uh, promise of God is external and internal and so uh, Mary has this blessing she has a word from God and she also will have the Christ child uh, inside um, he will be made 
uh, and was to be made manifest but this promise will be in her and it was in her and that's significant for us as we get a little bit further today uh, in this lesson talking about our relationship with God and you know when you read this account what do we do with this story uh, that we've heard it a hundred times a thousand times and how do we relate to this story now that we know it so well well we relate uh, to this story in the fashion that we as believers we have the promise of God in us we have uh, uh, the intent and the purpose and the plan of God uh, uh, in us now we're going to share that a little bit later in scripture because uh, the Holy Spirit is also a promise and you and I have that uh, and what this story tells us that if God is able to save us uh, which was his intent in bringing Christ into the world and we have received this uh, uh, over 2,000 year old prophecy fulfilled in us and we have moved ahead in faith and God has gone ahead and given us of his spirit uh, the Bible says as a down payment so what that tells us in my point in this is that God is reliable and he can be trusted if he has said it then he is able to bring this thing uh, to pass but Mary is receiving a very profound uh, uh, set of directives here of what God intends to do uh, and this is what I love about God uh, he is self sufficient uh, and this is why uh, we don't do and uh, can't do anything to earn uh, uh, our way or our place with God. It is clearly an act of his mercy and his grace that this blessing is, uh, is up on Mary. And, and, and what I love about this narrative, God is not even through the angel Gabriel. Uh, what is he asking Mary to do? What is her contribution to this? Uh, the, uh, God is not asking her for to do some kind of work. He's not asking her to pay a particular amount. He's not telling her she has to serve a X amount of time before he decides to do what he intends to do. Uh, uh, to the contrary, he is specifically telling Mary what he has decided, what he's going to do. Uh, it reminds me uh, if you have an opportunity at some time to go back over to Genesis uh, chapter 17 and you read over there how many times God says to Abram what he's going to do he tells Abram I I I and he just goes on and on he doesn't ask Abram for anything and this is where uh, uh, we have to understand that we can't do anything uh, uh, to that is deserving of the mercy and the grace of God but we're going to go a little bit further here because the second outline is entitled the promise assured this is taken from Luke chapter 1 uh, verses 29 through 33 again from the NIV translation uh, the Bible says Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be but the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Uh, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. Verse 32, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David verse 33 and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever his kingdom will never end God has gone ahead God has the plan God has the details God has all the winds the where and the hows and he's got everything in place so what we have to do is is in what Mary did at this time uh, after she got over the uh, 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 the troubling in her spirit of it all. Uh, if you go on in Luke chapter 1, you will see her thanks and her praise to God. Uh, but here, 
uh, God has decided that she would be the vessel. She would be the one uh, who would bring the Christ child into the world. Uh, God gives all the character traits of the child, of the Christ child, the Messiah. He will be. He will be great. He will be uh, called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, uh, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. When I was reading that, the Spirit of the Lord reminded me of Jeremiah chapter uh, 29, very familiar passage to us. Uh, God says, I know the plans that I have for you talking to Israel and God had a plan for Israel uh, they were in trouble they were being oppressed by uh, the Roman Empire and they needed deliverance uh, and they had received a prophecy uh, that the Messiah would come they just didn't know how the Messiah would arrive but if you look at the second chapter of the book of Luke uh, Simeon and Anna the prophetess they were in the temple the Bible says they were waiting uh, for the consolation of Israel and, and here Simeon had been promised that he wouldn't even die until he had seen the Lord's Christ so we can appreciate and be uh, highly encouraged today that uh, uh, we have and we are part of the promise of God we are part of the heritage of God uh, and we have uh, found favor uh, with God through his loving kindness and his mercy and all of us are fit uh, to die and should have been dead and gone but God through his grace and his mercy he gave us time and chance and chance and time and, and more opportunities and chance and until we got uh, connected and he gave us time uh, to get saved and we we were able to 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 obtain the salvation that Jesus was bringing uh, not just to Israel but to the entire human race and so how do you feel about that knowing that uh, uh, how old the prophecy is uh, that you have inside of you how old if you will the salvation uh, that is in that that is in you that you have a, obtained something that was promised uh, from long ago and now you have inherited that promise through the generations and through generation uh, you now in your generation you have now received salvation how do you feel about that knowing that uh, uh, God in his infinite wisdom he knew when you would be saved and he knew where he would save you and he knew what he would bring you through and what he would bring you out of and 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 so now we 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 seem to be sort of laid back and but this is exciting information because if if you cannot see yourself in this narrative you're missing something tremendous uh for your understanding uh, this is not just Mary's story. She is playing a huge part. But this is our story because the Christ, the Messiah that she's carrying is for me. And it's for you. And it's for the human race. It's to all those who would believe and, and call on the name of Jesus. So if God gave it to Mary and I'm a recipient of, of, of the Messiah that she carried, I am uh, extremely excited about that. And I hope that you are too. But here, uh, Mary didn't know what kind of uh, greeting this would be. And, and she was uh, perplexed in her mind. But uh, she surely thought, uh, what could such a, a, a greeting mean to such a lowly woman as I? As she pondered the matter, Gabriel spoke directly to her thoughts, telling her not to fear God's messengers offer, often deliver words of comfort in times when we are often frustrated and cannot seem to figure out what is going on in our lives. Have you ever had that happen to you where God brought you a song, brought you a word of encouragement, uh, guided you and helped you through a difficult period in your life? And, and this is what God's comfort is all about. And I'll share that with you a little bit later on because this promise of the Holy Spirit is, is uh, according to the scripture, will reside with us forever. 
uh, this truth for on time word brings peace to a troubled soul. Uh, Gabriel went on to assure Mary of her status with God by confirming the message of the father to Mary. She would conceive, give birth, and name the child of God Jesus. Gabriel told her what Jesus would would do in being the son of the highest. He would reside on the throne of David and reign over the house of Jacob forever. This was obviously a lot for Mary to grasp. Uh, being a teenager, however, as with any mother, she must have been excited to hear such good things proclaimed about her status uh, and mission. But wait, there is a problem with this message. So the question is asked here in the quarterly, have you ever been troubled in your soul? Recount the troubling times and share God's own time encouraging intervention, whether it was uh, by a sermon or song or friend or maybe through some other way that God let you know that you were not forgotten about but as we talked about this problem that uh, uh, confronts Mary about uh, carrying this child uh, we continue on with the third outline entitled Promise Revealed this is taken from Luke chapter 1 uh, verses 34 through 38 again from the NIV translation verse 34 the Bible says how will this be uh, Mary asked the angel since I am a virgin uh, the angel answered the Holy Spirit will come upon you and I want you to underline that in your Bible if you're following along with me because we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit he is uh, tremendous in this relationship uh, that we have with God and he is tremendous in pointing us in the direction that we should be going and he is tremendous in, in our understanding and helping us uh, with the fact that God said in his word uh, I believe uh, Hebrews 13 5 that he would never leave us and he would never forsake us but we're going to come back to that uh, but the Holy Spirit will come up uh, come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the Holy One to be born will be called the son of God verse 36 even Elizabeth your relative is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month verse 37 for no word from God will ever fail I want you to underline that if you're following along with me in your Bible Luke 1 37 for no word from God will ever fail uh, verse 38 I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word uh, to me be fulfilled. And the angel, then the angel left her. So we gave you some definition about that word fulfilled. Um, and so uh, that is what is taking place uh, uh, in Mary's life and also in Elizabeth's life, who is to bring uh, John the Baptist into the world uh, as Jesus' forerunner but the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. This is hard for a lot of people to accept uh, that Mary did not need Joseph to bring a child into the world. Uh, one of the things that gets us off track is that we sort of put God in a basket of our thoughts and how we can do things and but always remember he is not like man and his thoughts and his ways are not ours uh, we cannot fathom who God is we cannot uh, uh, we don't have the words to describe uh, uh, who God really is we have fragments if you will we have uh, portions of understanding we have uh, bits and and, and, and and pieces of, of, of information uh, but Moses had that dilemma in the third chapter I believe of Exodus uh, he asked God who shall I say uh, sent me uh, if they were to ask if you will and so uh, God says just tell them I am you know that I am so it is difficult uh, impossible for us but when God says he's going to do something 
And I guarantee you this challenged Mary's psyche and her her understanding of how things are traditionally done. But keep in mind, God is not like man. But here, Mary, while receiving the comfort for her fear and the message of uh, for her focus from the angel, realized that she had a major problem. Uh, if this was something that was about to happen in her life uh, at that time she was not married however she was a true virgin virgin who was committed to marry uh, Joseph the engagement process could take up to a year as this couple went through the pledges the dowry the marriage feast and finally the wedding this shows an extreme level of faith on Mary's part so you can see the understanding of trying to reason with what the angel is telling her uh, Mary is thinking about something natural and the and Gabriel is telling her about something spiritual uh, John chapter 4 helps us to understand this Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman uh, he said the father seeketh such uh, that would worship him in spirit and in truth and we have to put aside uh, all of these natural thoughts that we might have concerning God because he has no limit to his power there's nothing uh, one translation uh, from Luke chapter 1 uh, verse 37 says nothing uh, will be impossible with God there's absolutely nothing he cannot do and so we are able to pray about anything and everything because God has no limit he is capable of of doing all things and doing all things well but here the fact that she questioned Gabriel regarding her purity status indicated an understanding that the blessing to come was not in in root but it had arrived uh, it was a right now prophecy uh, that prophetic word from the angel was something that was going to occur soon and not sometime in the future so God in, in his infinite wisdom and even according to his power do you know God can bend and move the time he can slow it he can he can uh, 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 speed it up you know uh, uh, he has so many things um, uh, that he can do that we just can't understand and so uh, as it as we read here this was something that was not going to delay very long but it was up on Mary uh, and the angel Gabriel was confirming this so Gabriel then revealed the process of the promise the Holy Ghost would be the connector that would tie the bind between the Father God and the Mother Mary um, thus ensuring the child to be of God and thus the Son of God Gabriel then explained, or shall we say, gave confirmation that Mary's cousin, who was well up in age, was pregnant with child. When you consider that there were no telephones, text messaging, or internet, social media services, uh, we could assume that Mary was unaware of her cousin Elizabeth's status prior to the announcement uh, by the angel. Uh, but if we take the position that Mary was uh, unaware of Elizabeth's pregnancy, then Gabriel brought to remembrance for Mary the power of God and understanding that with God nothing is impossible. Uh, to this comforting confirmation, Mary submitted to the prophetic direction for her life. How exciting our world would be if we would submit to the many promises of God in our lives. Uh, Peter puts it this way humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and in due time he will uh, exalt you uh, and one of the things that gets us in trouble um, when we receive a word from the Lord as it happened to uh, Zacharias uh, back over in the first chapter uh, he failed to believe uh, the prophecy or the word that that he was being given and so the angel uh, touched him uh, and he was not able to speak uh, as he came out of the temple um, uh, performing the uh, custom 
uh, of his priesthood. So we want to make sure that uh, uh, Hebrews 11.6, I believe, helps us to understand without faith it's impossible to please God. But I want to take a few minutes and look at a few scriptures here that will guide us into what we have on the inside of us. Uh, this promise, if you will, and I want to go to the uh, 14th chapter uh, of the book of John, the Gospel according to John, and certainly you want to read all of uh, John chapters 14 through 16, uh, particularly uh, chapter 16 dealing with the work of the Holy Spirit, but in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John and beginning at the 15th verse, this is Jesus talking. The Bible says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and will be in you. Now do you see how that promise. Now that uh, uh, is uh, from God is external. And it also moves internally. We are able to identify. Um, Jesus goes on to say here in verse 18. To his disciples. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So uh, Jesus is telling his own. That he's going to pray. And the father uh, will give them the Holy Spirit will come up on them uh, and his intent when he comes is to be in them and so this is the part that we want to be able to take away uh, from this narrative today we have the same Holy Spirit that came up on Mary and overshadowed her uh, that to cause her to be with child, you have that same Holy Spirit in you today. You have that same power moving in your life. You have that same power active in your life. And guess what? According to Jesus, he's going to stay there. He's going to be there. He's not going to leave you as orphans. He's not going to quit on you. He's not going to get caught up where he can't help you. Uh, and so this is very encouraging for us. You know, the more I uh, was reading and, and thinking about this lesson, I just thought about how prophecy or the word of God, if we believe it, it should lead us to experience. This word that Mary is getting from the angel Gabriel is going to lead her to experience. She is going to know she has a child. The power of God is going to come up on her and she is not going to be the same. So when you know and you feel the power of the Holy Spirit, that should tell you something of the reality of what has happened to you and the reality and how reliable God is concerning what he said. You would not have that spirit from God if he did not say it. So we need to encourage ourselves uh, with what God has said concerning us. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 4. And I want to read verse 5. We're going to look at two more scriptures and then we'll be finished. But I want you to get this. Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 4 and being assembled together with them uh, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you have heard from me uh, verse 5 says for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So again, Jesus is confirming uh, to his own disciples that they are going to receive something. They are going to have an experience. We know what happened in Acts chapter 2. We know what happened at Pentecost. So Jesus is not telling us anything 
that will not lead us to the experience and to the power that we should have. It would be a shame for Mary to receive a word from God through the angel Gabriel and then God not be able to fulfill that word. So these realities and these truths, we need to accept them that God says, I don't lie. What I tell you, I bring to pass. And we need to reflect and remember the things that God has told us. Sure, they might be delayed, but that doesn't mean that they are not going to come to pass because God said it, it has to come come to pass because he told you something he can be trusted to fulfill that thing and guess what he doesn't need you to help him with his word if he said it long before you didn't even know what he was going to do in your life until he told you so now you have something to hope in and to look forward to and so the things that we that God will have us to do then we need to do those things but by on all accounts we need to believe of what God says in his word. Turn your Bibles with me again to Ephesians uh, chapter 1. We are talking about now what we have. Uh, God has said something to us uh, as well as to Mary and we have we have possession of it uh, at this time in our lives. Ephesians chapter 1. I want to go down to verse 13. The Bible says in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, watch this, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now this is shout material here. We have because we heard the gospel and we believed it. I love this how it starts it all in verse 13 of Ephesians chapter 1. It says in him, in God, in Christ you trusted. You trusted him after you heard him. Isn't that beautiful that we trust God? We believe what he said. And, and, and sometimes it gets difficult. But, but the Bible says you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And after you believe, you know what? You got a seal from the Holy Spirit of promise. You see how reliable God is? If he says to believe upon him and he will bless you and then you believe upon him and he seals you with his Holy Spirit. And I love this. This is just a, 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 the guarantee. This should tell you being filled with the Holy Spirit that you are going to be a part and you are a part of God's family. Nobody can take that away from you. This is what God intended for you to have as an inheritance it's a guarantee of our uh, inheritance until the redemption uh, of the purchased possession I want you to look at Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 Paul says I'm confident of this very thing that he that began a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ so I'm, I'm happy about this today that I have lived uh, uh, and come to a point in my life that I have received the salvation of Jesus Christ. I, I received what Mary carried. I received the Holy Spirit that came up on her, also came up on me, caused me to be saved, brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light, saved me from seen and unseen dangers, keeps me from the death angel. Uh, David says in Psalm 23, uh, uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Do you see how much you have already? And that's the point that we want to make. And the last scripture I want to give you is Ephesians chapter 4. It's such a, uh, it's, it's such a, a blessing uh, for us to know what the word of God says. Uh, but here is a bit of a warning here in uh, Ephesians 4 verse 30 the Bible says do not and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption 
We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit with unbelief and works of unrighteousness. If you go on and read that, uh, and I think I will, uh, verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And verse 32, uh, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, give, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. That's that grace. So we don't want to grieve this guarantee guarantee this promise that we have from God uh, that Mary carried. We want to be the type of Christians and don't get me wrong, we are work in progress. Uh, all of us need help with our with our tongues and our mouths and, and, and our attitudes and our conduct, but don't grieve the Holy Spirit. So if you need help with yourself, do like I do. I just say, Lord, help me with myself because I know I'm frail. I know I need that Holy Spirit. Well, what I am encouraged by is that I have that power through the Holy Spirit to help me uh, keep all of these things in check uh, because I have something that's priceless. I have something I didn't work for. I have something I don't deserve. I have something I didn't earn. I have something that, that I never could pay God for. I have his grace and his mercy through his salvation. I've received it and the Holy Spirit has come up on me. So I need to walk in step with him because I know that God didn't have to do this for me. God didn't have to do this for Mary. And she goes on, if you go over and back in Luke chapter 1, and she gives an excellent uh, praise to God for uh, how he has handled her, how he has dealt with her, how he has treated her. Mary knows she doesn't deserve it. But she's happy that God has chosen her. And, and that's the point that I want to make to you today. Uh, we want to be uh, mindful that God didn't have to do this for you. He didn't have to bring you out. He didn't have to select you. He didn't have to save you. But, but since he did. We ought to be excited about that today and we ought to trust God and we ought to thank God because he's reliable. Uh, do you know you're not keeping yourself? You can't watch over yourself. You can't see what's going on around you uh, all the time. But God said, don't go there. Go here. He guides us around all of the seen and the unseen danger. So we have something in us and, and listen to the Holy Spirit when he communicates. Don't give him his proper name. Don't say something told me. Say the Spirit of the Lord has told me thus and so. Give him his due because he is in you to guide you and he has a name and he has a purpose and he has a, he has a direction which is to lead and guide you in all paths of truth. You will see that in John 16. I, I'm sorry I have to stop now but I, I really get excited uh, about what I have and what I understand from the Word of God. This is not something that I made up. This is something that I'm reading about, that I'm in possession of, and I know I don't deserve it. Uh, I was just a sinner, just another sinner, saved by the grace of God, and I'm happy about that, that He chose to bring me out of my darkness and open up my understanding so I could receive this blessing. Uh, and so I, I feel just like Mary. He changed the course of my life uh, the day he came into my life. And I'm sure that she was never the same. And you will never be the same. I certainly thank, thank and praise God for you. But I want to read this closing prayer that's offered in the quarterly. Dear Lord, hear your servant's prayers. We submit to your will and thank you for being so kind and committed to your word toward us. Teach us to be examples of a reliable promise to all we meet. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we certainly, again, thank and praise God for this, this powerful lesson here, this narrative. And I hope that you will read all of it and, and just comfort yourself in what the Lord has done for you because of the blessing that Mary carried for you until God brought you to realize that it was for you. So until uh, such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.